Have you ever asked the magician how he does his tricks? Have you ever asked him, how do you pull the rabbit out of the hat, Bob? No, you haven't. So why would you ask a black woman how she pulls off her magic? This week on Textually Active, I brought in a guest, Lex. I had to tell Meezy, take the week off. We got to talk about some things. This week, we're talking about black women's business and how you need to remove yourself from the conversation. Tune in this week on Textually Active. Welcome back to a new episode of Textually Active. Textually Active. This is your weekly dose of conversations about navigating the digital age while dealing with friendships, relationships, and all the ships in between. I'm Rez, and I'm here. Uh, Meezy is on vacation, no Rory and Maul. But I have Lex here What's in that? his seat. Um, you all may know her from our episode Seven Layer Siblings when she came on. Um, to talk about her relationship with her brother, Meezy. That was me. So I got Meezy's sister here, and EA is on the boards. And we're yep. back for another episode. Now, like I said, uh, Meezy is on vacation, not to be confused with Quit the Show. I know last <laughs> week we had an episode about quitting jobs and doing things, not doing things that no longer serve you and leaving work. Um, and I know sometimes Meezy sound like he don't want to be here, <laughs> but uh, he, he just on vacation, y'all. He'll be back next week. <laughs> But I thought this was the perfect opportunity to come on here and talk about something that's really been getting underneath of my skin. Um, Lex, I'm sure it's been getting Crawling. underneath of your skin. Um, it's a it's a hot topic. It resurfaces every couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, y'all always in black women's business. Why? So um, if you're if you're a man, if you're listening to this, if you're of another race, um, this is your time to sit down. Grab your notebook, um, take notes, because we we really got to talk about it. Let's talk about it. If you're one of those people who, when I said black women's business, you you screwed up your face or you're concerned about what it means to have black women's business, like it's a a thing. And um, it's where you shouldn't be. Ever. Take a look at your skin. Is it brown? Mine's brown. Take a look at your genitals. Is it giving? If you're not a woman... And you're not black, you shouldn't be in black women's business. Ever. Um, And I find that it's always people who aren't black women who have the most to say about black women. Always. Can I I tell you the two that aggravate me the most? Tell me. Black men and white women Mm. are always in our fucking... I can cuss, right? Yes, you can. Always in our fucking business. Yeah, they are. F-A-W. Fucking business. It, it's almost like it turns into, like, I, I get the difference between wanting to learn and wanting to know what it's like. Because if you look from the outside, it's magical. It's lit. Yesterday, I went to the gym. I forgot my scarf and my hat. So I took this wig off and I had wig braids, right? Cleo. But I decided on. when I left, I didn't want to give wig braids. So I put my wig back on. As you should. The looks that I got... <laughs> Leaving the gym, <laughs> we're like, who the hell is that? And when did she walk into the locker room? I'm like, mind your business. This has nothing to do with you. But from the outside looking in, that looks like magic, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you get those questions often. Right. Is this your real hair? How did you do that? Where did this come from? And some of those questions just don't need to be asked. Ever. It's like, I, I can't figure out why you feel like you're obligated to that information. Google has been free since its inception. And it's always there. Right. And and it's just like, and this is specifically pertaining to white women and women who are not of color and, or not black. Right. And it's just like, there's so much free information. You got it. You have to know at this point that you're out of bounds. Right. So now I feel like you're antagonizing me and you're trying to get a reaction out of me. You and go I on just, YouTube. I'm out of patience. You go on YouTube for everything else. YouTube, how do I change my oil? YouTube, how do I season my chicken? YouTube, how do I change the light bulb? Pinterest. YouTube, how we do our hair. There are plenty of girls on there telling you. Every day. What happens what the wash, straighten, and then curl uh, situation is like, how I do a twist out, wash and go, whatever. 
you know you could you should you could just get on you youtube and watch it literally but it definitely turns into like what are you trying to say in this right. moment when you're getting those questions right Right. And it's very offensive. I shared something, I think the other day on uh, Instagram, and it talked about how like the respite that a lot of black people, specifically black women have had from the workplace and how a lot of people are not looking forward to going back into the office because of the microaggressions about our hair, about the clothes that we wear, about our bodies. And it's just like everything is so nitpicked when it comes to us by our own, i.e. black men, but specifically by people that's always in our fucking business and ain't got shit to do with them. Right. I think I've I've heard from so many black women how much they enjoyed the freedom of not having to worry about their hairstyles. Listen. Girls who explored color during quarantine because they didn't want to be asked questions when they went into work with like purple hair, pink hair, right. different types of hair, like blonde, even blonde, because some people see blonde as like right. ratchet, red right. as ratchet, ghetto. And it's and it's just like it's not that, but when you get into micro aggressions, it's the questions that you shouldn't be asked. And why do you feel comfortable enough to ask me about my hair? Talk about it. And what are you saying by asking me if it's my real hair? Right. Is that a way for you to do what? Like, so when I say no, now you're going to ask me, how did I do it? Right. How did I put it in? Right. And all of those different questions. Like how I'll, I'll never forget this happened. Um, and I shoot myself in the foot every time but when going to work it's been so many situations but the one that stands out most to me is when I came into work I had a different hairstyle if you know me you know I don't I don't really like to keep it I like to keep it moving switch it up do different things braids wig natural whatever um so that gets confusing when you're going into work but as a black woman you know that we're constantly changing our hair it's a discussion that we have right it's a group chat hot topic but I go into work with a different hairstyle and she's like, oh, I like your hair. Is that a wig? Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? What? And then she's like, yeah, you know, like I go to um, during Halloween, I'll go to the costume store and get I'm myself sorry. a costume <laughs> wig and kind of like wear them. Wigs are fun. Like not during Halloween. It's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you feel when you get those questions at work? So I currently work in an environment where that is no longer the case. I work at a black ass, black, yes. black school. Mm. And I have said since like a month being there, I can never work in white spaces again oh my because of the freedom that I have. When I walk through the halls with some straight backs or, you know, some some uh, Marley twists or I throw a half wig on, it's like a peep. I see you. You see me. What's up? Oh, they look cute. And nobody asking me. What it is. Did you get a haircut? You know, did you change whatever? And that was like one of the biggest, most annoying pet peeves and microaggressions of working in white space and having white women who are your um, direct supervisors or people that you have to report to. Because if it's like a big meeting or a presentation or something going on, then you come into, you know, the respectability of straight hair versus natural. And if you are a natural woman... It's this like, you know, binary of like, what do you choose? And you on one side, y'all know me, Black Panther. It's like, fuck them people, fight the system. But then on the other side, you know, you're going to be reprimanded for it. And that's just like a burden that only black women carry. And so the fact that I don't have to operate in that space anymore has been the most freeing thing in my life. And because of that, I like God willing, I will never work in white space again. Yeah, because it's it's like. Another job on the job, in right. addition to all the other bullshit you have to deal with at work, now you have to worry about policing yourself so that you aren't policed by white women. Gosh. Because white men just, job. they're so, like, I, I expect nothing from them, right? But as women, it's just like, you already know the things that we have to deal with. Why are you Why are you talking to me about this while we on the clock? I feel like it's easy to gather white men. Like so white easy, men get gathered like, easily. They make it so easy. But the white women. In the white tears. Yeah, are the ones that really get sneaky with their approach to the things that they're doing. And it's like, dang, I got you. We a woman. We supposed to be able to relate on this level. Feminism. But I can't relate to you on this. No. But you touched on something with the natural hair versus straight hair, European styles, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. And that's been a hot topic. Yeah. On the timeline. Yeah. And a lot of y'all was in black women's business when this was going around. 
our braids a dressy style? Like, can you wear braids to a formal event? Absolutely. First and foremost, I can wear my hair any motherfucking way I want to wear my hair because it's my motherfucking head. Right. And shouldn't nobody be in my business as it pertains to that. If I want to get my Jay-Z on and have some free-flowing locks, that's what the fuck is going to be. Because that's at the end giving. of the day, it doesn't take away from my intellectual ability to do this motherfucking job or to show up and be whoever you need me to be at this time in this space. Right. My hair is an accessory and it's an aesthetic. And that's it. I'm sorry that everybody else <laughs> can't manipulate their hair the way that we can. We have yeah. a variety of styles that we can choose. Who would I be to just come in here with a ponytail all oh. days when I can do ponytails, braids, locks, straight, curly, up, down, half down, half to the side, side part, middle part. Uh, you know, talk about it. But you want to you want to talk about unprofessional. White people coming in with that fresh wash out the shower, wet dog hair. Oh, my gosh. No. Like, you're not about to talk about an afro when you come in every day and your head soaking wet because you don't care enough to be presentable for work. So, like, don't say shit to me, Susan, y'all Karen. Talk, y'all talk about afros, but what is a, what is a messy bun? Hmm? A messy bun. The word. What's the word? word? Way. Mess. Less work than what we do to achieve the curls and the definition and the hold and the style when we do our natural hair. So it's just like, I feel like there there was some unlearning I had to do around natural hair mm-hmm. and natural styles and protective styles. Yeah. But I feel like I wouldn't feel that way if it wasn't for the pressures of society right. around those things. Right. Like when the conversation was brought up about braids being a formal style. I spent some time in my early 20s feeling like if I had braids and a special occasion was coming up that I had to take my hair out Mm -hmm. and get a sew in or get a a weave or something to conform to what the social standards are. Right. Because when I'm wearing braids, everybody's looking at me sideways. Mm -hmm. But I really appreciate the girls who are going out to these photo shoots in braids, who are showing up in these moments in braids, who are at award shows in braids, who are dressing them up, making them look like something. Beyonce and Lemonade with them goddamn braids. Come on, Lemonade braids. Okay. Can we talk about how that was a whole thing? It It still is. Yeah. Can I get the Lemonade braids? Can Mm -hmm. I get the Lemonade braids? Right. Sis made a whole new subcategory of cornrows. Right. To this day, we call them lemonade braids. They are lemonade braids. That's powerful. Like, our hair, as much as it is talked about, and we try, they try to reprimand us for us just being creative with it, it's political as fuck. It is. Kamala, Michelle Obama, as soon as she was in the eye of, like, everyone, people immediately started attacking her for her hair. And oftentimes, it be us. It do. It be, you need Gabby Douglas. In the Olympics. Oh, my like, gosh. It's always, like, the girl wasn't out there sweating down winning you know, awards. A whole Olympian. You could never. What did my girl Venus say? You couldn't light a candle. Because at the end of the day, I'm better than anybody critiquing me. Right. And so it's like, why do we spend so much time talking about shit that don't got nothing to do with us? It don't. What it I don't. eat don't make you shit. The hair conversation is on the top. And it's always in the forefront for us. Like, why... When I and my brown skin decide that I want to throw a little color in there to this day, I, I've never experimented with colors outside of the natural colors. Like I always do blonde, red, mm-hmm. browns. Mm-hmm. I'll experiment with Friend, the browns. You gotta but I've never did a purple, a pink, a green. And it's just like, that should look fun. It's so it's fun. It's not my twist, but it looks fun. Yeah. Right? And I hate the fact that when the girls pop out in a pink wig which looks amazing yeah on yeah. us a blue wig which looks amazing yeah. on us it's like oh she's ghetto well what's ghetto what is ghetto listen i saw i saw a meme and it was like a couple in a t-shirt and it said oh god i'm gonna what did it say? it took a while for us to get to this point right it says something to the effect of like everything's deemed ghetto until like white people do it and then it it's is. creative it is because when we and color hair is not anything new, we've always been able to go to the always. hair store and have platinum blonde, always green. My good friend Tiffany, she always throw a little purple in them braids. I love it. Little purple, I love little it. color, and she's been doing this for a while now. 
But since the white women are starting to take these hairstyles and run with it, it's almost like, oh, it's okay to have Not color. Not even starting. It's, o- it's okay for them to have color. Right. Because the emo girls been rocking a pixie hot pink, good for a green, good for a purple or a blue on the NM spikes. It's the, have, I can remember right. the 90s, hot topic. early 2000s, Hot Topic Going always crazy. had the color gel. And I used to be mad, like, why this won't stick to my color? Right. Not knowing, yes. baby, you don't got blonde hair. Uh-uh, it's never going to show baby. up. It's not. It's but, black. you know, luckily, I had a mom who allowed me to experiment with that while I was very young. And I was like, taking cosmetology classes in high school through this program. And um, I experimented with all types of things. Once I'd learned how to, like, dye my hair and bleach it, and I knew that was the first step to the cup. I didn't have orange, green, red, purple, pink. I mean, all the things. Well, maybe that's why I didn't try uh, colors because when... <laughs> when, when, my, when my mom let me try the color, mm-hmm. baby fell smooth the fuck out. <laughs> Ball baby, ball baby <laughs> is what I was. So I said, okay. after that, when you said blonde, it hurt me a little bit because I was triggered. I was like, I'll never do that again. But she let us do like um, highlights. So yeah, I did the highlights, yeah. but I didn't know the maintenance behind it. I was in, right. a and freshman see, in high school. I was school. learning. Mm-hmm. I was a junior and I was learning and I was following the textbook way to do things. Yeah. And I was taking care of my own hair and I was also working so I could afford to go every two weeks. Get right. it done, get the color treatments on and so forth. And by the time I got to like college and then by the time I definitely got to a professional, I like I've been there, done that. I've right. experienced it. And if I want to do it again, I will do it again. Right. Because like I will continue to say anything that is um an accessory or an aesthetic, that what okay, and so I have pink hair. Am I less smart? Am I less capable? Am I less of anything else because my hair is pink? No. It almost feels like Anything that we do outside of this cookie cutter that they put in front of us. If we're not Claire Huxtable, we are we are ghetto. ghetto. <laughs> because sometimes even showing up in these spaces where I'm called to be a professional and work in my field and do things with people outside of my race, you are so fortunate to work in an all-black environment. Listen, I Gosh, love it so much. I, I, this is it, the first time, though, at damn near 30 right. that I've been able to experience this utopia. It almost reminds me of that HBCU syndrome, like when we go to an HBCU school and we're surrounded by black teachers, we're surrounded by black students, and the whole experience is white, and that kind of culture, or black, and that culture shock you get when you go to a white environment, mm-hmm. and it's like, dang, this feels weird right all eyes are on me because a lot of these people never took the time to figure out what it means to be black and all they see is the representation that they get on tv right so it's like when you see a girl with color hair long nails gold decked out looking good in my opinion period real hot girl shit it's like oh she gotta be ghetto right no but then my thing is like What's wrong with being ghetto? It's lit. Everybody want to be ghetto. When it's like the favorite thing, especially in and this is maybe a different episode, the elite blacks and the bougie blacks. I want to do hood rat shit with my friends, but with sophisticated people. So then, is ghetto wrong or is it not? Because right. it's something you want to do in your leisure time. Right. Like we got to reconcile that. Like our elitism sometimes is like more harmful than the people outside of our communities. Right. Because then. You love it. You love it. We even that's a different you're it's right. A different that's episode. a different episode. We ain't gonna get into it but today. But we do we do police ourselves yes. within our community. Like yes. we love this it, it is black men and white women who police black women's business, but there the are most, the black women. There are there that are. Stockholm syndrome sit up on their high throne mm-hmm. and they say stuff like <clears throat> Monique in a robe on live. Baby um, you shouldn't be wearing With your no bonnet. Bra no bra. You shouldn't be wearing your bonnet outside. When you step outside, you know, this is a representation of yourself. And you need to bring your best foot to the table. Ma'am. You're on the World Wide Web. <laughs> Everybody and they mama can see you with them titties sitting on your knees. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? And you want to talk about a bonnet? A bonnet. But it's like, what did my bonnet do to you? My bonnet been holding me down. My bonnet been holding me down. So this is probably like three weeks old at this point. Yeah. But Monique came on to the interwebs um, before she even got to it. There was a picture that went viral of a black man 
who posted like four or five black women at the airport mm-hmm. with their bonnets on. And that. his comments around it were, we need to do better as a people. Why couldn't they take their bonnet off and all of these other things? Just like talking down on these women for wearing their bonnet outside. So then Monique, who is in that class of women who are policing black women who are policing black women for doing black things and being in black women, when instead she could have just said, you're in women's business. Stay out of it. You're in black women's business right now. <laughs> this is a, you don't know this territory. Right. You don't know what it's like to set your hair for the night, but you can't take it out just yet. Because the weather isn't giving what it's supposed to give. What? Talk about it. You don't know the difficulties behind putting the twist in, making sure it's twisted, making sure it's dry, and then waking up in the morning and it's not dry, Mm -hmm. and you need a little bit more time, but you still got to go get something from the store. Huh? So your bonnet is still on. Airplane air. Can we talk about it? You don't know. Destructive. It's dry. It'll dry your stuff right on out. My curls need to set. Now, if I walk out in these straight backs or in these twists, it's a conversation about that. If I cover these twists up because I don't want people to see that, it's a conversation about that. Our hair takes a lot longer than what people like. I can't just wake up on Monday Decide to put it in a ponytail on Tuesday, Mm-mm. then roll around and wear it straight on Wednesday, Mm-mm. and then wear it curly on Thursday. It's a process. Do you, how long does it take you to wash your hair? Mm, let's see. So when I was like 100% natural, it's called wash day for a reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because it could take maybe anywhere from 8 to 24 of them hours mm. to get the desired style. Sure so did. that matters. Am I doing a protective style, box braids, um, Senegalese twists, Marley twists? Am I doing something where I need to add in some extra help? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Right? That's going to be six to seven hours. Okay. Or am I doing something more natural? Am I straightening my hair? It really depends. I personally decided that I need a little extra help. I need a little chemical two, three times a year, right? So I'm text lax, technically. So on average, even with that added chemical, it probably takes me on a wash day from from inception, in, in the shower, washing, cleansing, conditioning, to fully done, hair is blown out and or styled. It could be anywhere from... Three hours to eight. Right. Just depends on the style that I'm doing. And emergencies happen within that All eight hour period. All the time. I don't wear, ran out of braiding hair. Talk about <laughs> it. Talk <laughs> about go out. running out of hair. God or for, jail. Right. Or edge control. Or anything you need. Or being hungry. Right. Because I've been doing this since eight this morning and I need a meal. And what I'm not about to do is take this side out that's done. But what I'm about to do, throw that bonnet on. Right, we can't right let around. them see the magic. We can't right. let them see the magic. There's been plenty of times where I think even some stylists start with the outside. For that so very you reason. Can... You know how many girls used to come to high school with them micros, three <laughs> rows done in the front and in the back, <laughs> and be like, I got to get the middle done today right. after school? And because it took so long. Listen. But black hair, black women's hair is not your business. And it's I feel not. like a lot of black men are coming around to it because they're wearing these styles where they are required to grow hair or, you know, like the, the fade with the hair right, on the top, they right. the braids. So they're coming around to it. But for yeah. you guys who still don't know anything about it. So that's called the Atlanta nappy, apparently. The Atlanta. We're not calling it. That's that. what they call it's it. We're not calling it? it the Atlanta nappy. I'm not. Uh, I refuse. I call it a Chris Murrow. You guys are going natural. <laughs> so for all the guys who are going natural, they understand what it's like. But for the guys who still haven't got their mind your business about mind black it. women's hair. Period. That's all I have to say about that. Um, the other thing they police is our emotions. It's almost like, as a black woman, I'm not allowed to have anything to say back. And if I do to, like, a snarky remark, it's automatically, she's angry. Well. I mean, well. Yeah. (laughs) Wouldn't you be angry? (laughs) But it kind of, it's been happening throughout my life. But I've been rewatching Bad Girls Club. Okay. So, perfect example of black women policing our emotions, policing our feelings. Mm -hmm. Bad Girls Club was a a show that came out early 2000s, kind of like into 2012, the 2010s, 
it's a show where you go on there to be a bad girl. Right. You fight, you're catty, you're mean, you gossip, you don't know how to be a good, you haven't went to therapy yet. Right. You haven't did the work. Right. So these girls are in their early 20s, everything is a fight, they don't know how to communicate, whatever, whatever. So the whole purpose of the show is to be bad. You go in there to fight, you go in there to argue. It's called Bad Girls Club. Throw water, whatever. So it is Bad Girls Club season nine, they're in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I want you to think back, if you guys are listening and you watch the Bad Girls Club, to a castmate named Erica. And she wasn't there for long. I think she got sent home by like episode five. She mm-hmm. started the whole, I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> okay. So she, she's on there. She's being bad, doing her thing, gets into one fight and gets sent home. And the production is like, you hit her so hard the first time that we just have to, it's too violent. So it caused me and my friend to look up the rules. The rules don't say anything about how hard the hit is. The rules don't say anything about, you know, who lost, who won. She be, she whooped the girl ass. You mad because I got some thumpers. That she, ain't my she fault. She whooped the girl ass, okay? And the rules are like you could get into three fights that you initiate, and then after that you go home. If you fight outside of that, you have to go home. If you fight outside, it's more rules, especially since they were in Mexico. Mm-hmm. My point is she got sent home on the first fight that she had but there was a hispanic girl and white women on there who were fighting way more than her the hispanic it. girl came to the reunion and she's like oh i got into a fight uh with all of the cast i think she fought like all four of them <laughs> and did not get and she was whooping their ass too but the thing is it's kind of like socially accepted for Hispanic women to be violent, oh, to be crazy, and they call oh, it yeah. spicy. Oh, yeah. But when a black woman has that same energy, it's kind of like, oh, she's violent. She mm-hmm. could hurt somebody. Dangerous. It's dangerous. Angry. She needs to go home. Mm-hmm. Christina was whooping them bitches' ass. Period. All up and down them hallways. And she got sent home the first time she fought. So it's like, stop policing our anger. Yeah. Have you had any experiences with that? Now, Riz, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, it is no secret that I am considerably um, aggressive. I've been labeled a firecracker, feisty. I mean, all the things that you could label a regular black woman who is in tune with what the fuck is going on. And right. that's the problem. You're not about to play in my face. Nobody. <laughs> and so because I know where my boundaries stand, I'm going to speak the fuck up for myself. And I'm short. There's a little Napoleon in there because it's like, meow, 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 meow. but it's because I don't want nobody. How tall are you? Five even. Okay. And it took all my life to get there. All my life I had to fight <laughs> to get five even. You was wanting to grow. I, I could have been five three. Like, come on now. But that, we're not going to yeah. get into that. Okay. But, you know, it's like a, after a certain point being, uh, and, and even added to, I know we're going to get into this later in the show, colorism, a darker skinned black woman, I have always had to be my biggest advocate and advocate for myself because I don't want anybody to feel dis, dis- I don't want anyone to feel comfortable disrespecting me. Yeah. And so the first time it's done, I got to dead that shit on sight because I don't want you to ever think you can do this again. And so it may come off as, you know, abrasive or rude or unnecessary because maybe it was a microaggression or you didn't mean it that way or maybe it wasn't malicious. But guess what? You're not going to do it again. Right. You might say or get away with it once, but it won't happen again because I'm going to dead it on sight. It's your job to stand up for yourself in those Always. situations. Every day. But it's almost like we have to say it with a dose of sugar. So it's like you're not labeled as that angry right. black woman because the repercussions around the repercussions. Um, I don't know. I'm butchering that word. But the consequences <laughs> around being standing up for yourself mm-hmm. as a black woman come off as you're harmful, Mm -hmm. you're hurting somebody. Like, people can't stand our rage, but you never take a step back to see what it's like to walk around constantly on defense. My thing is, like, (sighs) everyone loves to quote Malcolm. You know, the black woman is the most disrespected person in America. Whoop-de-whoop. Okay, so if you know that, then reconcile the fact that I'm mad. Right. If I'm the most disrespected in this, this, blah, 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 blah. Right. Bush mouth, what's happening? <laughs> if I'm the most disrespected person in this country, arguably this world, right? Yeah. And I'm angry. One plus one is two all day. So then that makes a lot of sense to me. So maybe you need to take a step back and figure out what it is you need to do so that you don't trigger me. If I am already constantly being disrespected and everyone knows that. Like, I feel like that's not a secret anymore. Right. 
So it's, then why do I need to, to walk on eggshells as I am like allowing my frustration and my anger to come out so that I am not having displaced anger on my spouse, on my family, on my friends or whatever. I'm going to give it back to whoever brought it to me. Right. Bring some, leave with some more. We just sat here and talked about <laughs> <laughs> my auntie coming out. <laughs> we just sat here and talked about how we can't even hardly go out in public without getting that side eye and that judgment. And as much as people feel like, you know, they're just looking at you. No, baby. I know the difference between a look and a look. Right. OK, right. so when I'm going into total wine, minding my goddamn business and y'all looking at my goddamn lashes, minding black women's business, it's almost like. Honey, like what are you looking at <laughs> take a picture it'll last longer and they started you know the mask mandate has been lifted in north carolina so i decided that i'm still gonna wear my mask and when i go in these public places because i'm sick and tired of y'all being in my my damn face mind it so <laughs> it's just all of those things coupled with being judged, coupled with the microaggressions, coupled with everything else. If you were any other person on this world walking around with this weight on your shoulders yeah. and something happened, the last thing you want to be told is that, oh, my gosh, she's angry. Right. Like, fix the problem. But then my thing is like, so fucking what? Right. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I have a thousand reasons to be mad unless you're willing to a cash at me for my time. B, go to some therapy so that you can stop doing the shit that's making me angry. C, mind your motherfucking business. <laughs> we have nothing to talk about. Like, I'm allowed to be angry. You know how many white men I see walking around being mad angry. over the most trivial things? Angry. They can show, literally show their whole white ass on a job. I mean, throwing stuff, flipping shit over. Cussing crying, people out. Cussing people out. And it's just... Oh, Tanner just had a day. He had a day. The, the, the motherfucker that killed them Asian women down in Atlanta. They were trying what to say the he sheriff had say he had a bad day? A bad a day. A bad day. A bad day. Let it be a black woman. If Let me tell you how many bad days I had. <laughs> a lot. Mass and murder. And let me tell you how many times Mass murder. I took it to that level or decided to go the fuck home because, you know, you ever been outside and you're like, you know what? You know what? To, let me go I home. just need to go home. I shared a post a while ago and it said silence or violence. Yeah. Those are the only two options you have with me. I just need to go home. You be glad that I decided to shut the fuck up and walk away because the only other option is violence. Right. To tear it the hell up. So it's just like, don't ask me if I'm angry. Don't label me as angry. I'm not a preschooler. You don't need to right. identify my feelings. It's okay for me to be angry. Yeah. I think I'm in every right as with every other person on this world to express. Right. Emotions. Because nine times out of ten, you got black women fucked up. Right. And I'm angry because you're what in my business? Mm-hmm. And where should you be? Not in it. Not you in could it. be anywhere in the world. Not in it. And instead, you're here with me. Gosh. I think I minding think the, my business. The songwriter said. <laughs> minding my business. <laughs> you could be anywhere in the world. But where are you? You're here with me. In my business. In my business. Why? We're trying to figure it out. Um, the next thing. You talked about everything else, you know, being angry. Um, in the day in Rome, we're mm. out here getting to know people. Things are happening. Everybody needs somebody. We we need our, our fancy tickled every once in a while. I like to sit on somebody's face. Okay? Talk about it. Well, my soon-to-be husband's face at this time. But there was a time <laughs> <laughs> when I was single and I'm out here looking for people. <gasps> Sorry, Mom. Um, <laughs> but why is it? That we get this title that we're not submissive. Oh, God. The problem is, I'm not going to submit to a fucking idiot. Ever. That's what it is. And a lot of men are the fuck stupid. So I'll be damned if I'm running around after a dumbass man. Talk about it. So sorry. I'm not sorry. Like, okay, not sorry. Not going to be sorry. So you have it fucked up, clearly. That you're going to be led by somebody who is unable to lead. When a woman, a black woman, finds somebody who is able to lead, and if she's comfortable with that, Mm -hmm. she is able to submit to her husband. But the whole thing around it is that we're difficult, we don't listen, we talk back. Uh, Get a blow up doll. Hello? (laughs) Hello? Since when don't all women, we don't, women don't listen. I mean, my, my 
thing is with the whole leadership and the whole submission thing, like, what the fuck am I submitting to? You don't have your shit together. And it's like, you want me to submit to what? Mm-hmm. To your bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies? You don't even know what the fuck you want to do with your life. Like, what are we talking about here? <laughs> like, no, seriously. It's always the niggas that have the least that require the most. That you know how many niggas come in my DMs? If y'all follow me or know anything about me, I cook. I love to cook. Where can they follow That's you? That's a part of my self-care. You can follow me at underscore luxurious. Mm-hmm. Like, luxurious, but take that first you out at an E. Got it. But I get so many niggas like, you know, when I'm going to get a plate? When you going to cook for me? When you going to da 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 When you going to fucking build a house? We ain't going to pay for the house for me to cook in. Because unless we're talking about that, what do you mean fix you a plate, cook you a meal, and do it? Oh, you're so, oh, you wanted them. You, you better believe it. Talk I about am. it. I am. Talk about because it. Because what, like, it's the audacity. And it, it's just so asinine to me that men think that, like, I'm just going to naturally, like, succumb to whatever it is you want me to do without you being willing to give me anything. Right. I saw a, a tweet, I think it was, the other day that said, Men require way more loyalty from women than what they're willing to give. Yeah. And it's like from day one. That's true. And it's and I, I can't understand in how Beyonce's year of 2021, y'all still think that that shit is going to rise. It's Blue Ivy's It's year. Blue. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. B had 2020. Yeah. Be good. B, okay. B is sitting down. She's in retirement. Got She's you. with Mama Tina. You right. Uh, blue, it's Blue Cern. Blue Cern. So in the year Blue Ivy 2021, it's just like, nigga, ha- what do you have? Nothing. And that's the thing. It's those those men who are the most vocal about oh, it. Oh, yeah. About she don't listen. What am I listening to? Well, what are to? you saying? What, what direction <laughs> what are you, you giving me? me to to? She asked too many questions. I want to know I what's clarity. going on. I want to know what's going on. You want me to ride or die? Where are we riding to? And why do where I have we, to die? Where are we Is riding? Is living not an option? Let's get rid of that. I want to go to where we ride and live. So in what space... Is it that people aren't allowed to voice their opinion? And why is that title placed on black women? Like, I feel like it's a natural thing to ask questions. Yeah. To want to see the roadmap, to want to see the plan, especially if you're a Virgo woman. What's going on? Come on, Virgo. Where are we we going? Where are we going? What are we doing? How How are we doing that? Oh, you're doing that like that? All right. Do you have a plan? I'm okay with sitting back as long as you've proven that you are able to drive the boat. Right. I'm not going to let a rookie drive the boat. No. Then we get into the talks of riding or dying. No, seriously. And I'm not just going to ride blindly. I need to check... The brakes, you got all four wheels, you driven before, you got Talk your license, you good. Talk all right, we in this car and we riding and I'm going to shut up. Well, My, I'm not going to shut up. But. I, I think it's it's like more tradition than not, because even when you get to a place with like a, a man, I am notoriously single. I've been single all of my 20s. I will be 30 in September and I'm not loving it here. So, you know, hey, and DMs are open, but it's like... <laughs> I'm not going to just settle for anything. And at damn near 30, I'm definitely not about to just get out the game. And I didn't spend all this time working on who I am and the things that I want. Mm -hmm. And because I do have peace and I do know like who I am as a woman, like you can't just bring anything to me. You can't just tell me anything. I'm not 21 anymore. It's not just like go with the vibes. Like if you're coming to me and I'm 30 and more than likely you're past 30, what are we doing? No plan. I'm not about to keep showing up to the cookout of Thanksgiving with a boyfriend. Like, do you have a plan for your life? Do you have a plan for me? Mm-hmm. What is it that you want? Nick, every nigga come for something. And they if do. you just trying to fuck, say that. Because why do I need to submit to you? Right. If that's all you're about. It's, it's just the thing is, we can and we will, but don't put the label on all of us for right. not being able to submit. But right. make sure you have something to, to bring to the table. To. If you're talking about submit because that means being a leader, right? You know when you go to high, when you go to apply for that CEO role, that director role, you you gotta have a little bit of experience a behind your belt. They're asking for yes. your resume. They want to see who you can manage and who you have right. managed, right? And a bachelor's degree is not enough to it's say not. that you're able to do that. That interdisciplinary so. studies ain't gonna cut <laughs> it, babe. Enough. It's not, it's enough. not enough. And my and it's like the biggest thing that is just like so aggravating. To me specifically, I do not speak for all single black women, but like the older I get, 
the less interested I'm in, the less interested I am in men who just are like for the vibes or just yeah. here for a good time, not a long time. It's like, okay, go do that with somebody that's 23, 24. You'll but stop wasting yourself. my motherfucking time. You'll vibe yourself right into a situation. No, seriously. Or right into some shit that I, I, I know better than. Mm-hmm. Right. And so don't be mad at me because I have boundaries. Yeah. Right. And it's just like. And then that comes off like abrasive or like, you know, requiring or doing. I had a man tell me, you know, you do too much. Okay, well, maybe you don't do enough. What do you mean do too much? Oh, I'm too, I'm too, everything that I am and that I stand for is too much. If you don't have the capacity to handle me, just say that. And that's fine. It's okay. You ain't got to be here. It's just not enough. It's too much for you. What you won't do, somebody else will. Right. I think um, something else that's really been heavy on my spirit and something that really bothers me a lot is when, and it hasn't happened recently because I spent a lot of time getting myself together. Well, mm-hmm. not even together, but like not allowing that space. Right. And I've heard it happen to a lot of my girlfriends, anybody else, you know. Are you mixed or what are you mixed with? Are you look exotic or are you a little white? That whole colorism conversation around black women. Mm. And it really hit me the other day when I was listening to Lil Wayne. And I was just enjoying my workout. Talk just about it. Enjoying Say my workout. Line. I know which one you're talking about. And there's a song Lil Wayne has right above it. And a lot of Lil Wayne songs, but the one I'm talking about is right above it. And he said, beautiful black woman, I bet she looked better red. Mm. And God damn it, if that ain't a conversation that we mm. have every day within mm. our community about what it means to be a darker skinned woman versus light skin and how mm. that has played a role in our upbringing and the way that we view each other, even as darker skinned women compared to light skinned women mm-hmm. and even how we see ourselves. Right. It's like, God damn it, colorism. <laughs> and God damn it, men, for playing into right? this. Right. And speaking on our color and dividing us in this way. Yeah. And it just. <laughs> Fuck mm. it. it hurts. Mm. That's it hurts. a whole other episode. Like the work that you have to do. Um, I'm to not. Just exist. I'm not dark skin. I feel like I'm brown skin. Yeah. But just realizing that and correcting people when they do call me light skin is a a deep rooted problem. Yeah. Like they'll be like, oh, you're light skin. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> but like that whole thing and Can it's. I- Okay, as a dark-skinned woman, I cannot tell you how many times I have had to correct someone, especially in the 90s and early 2000s, the whole pretty for a dark-skinned girl and having long hair and having a nice shape. There are so many times where I remember like just being young and navigating a space I had no business navigating at that young age. One of my mom's friends, I believe, bought me a book and it was called The Skin I'm In. And she gave it to me when I graduated fifth grade, Mm -hmm. going into sixth grade. I didn't even know I needed that. But she was another dark skinned woman. And, you know, my mom's very fair. She's a light skinned woman. And so she did not have the tools to help me navigate that space, but she didn't have the experience and Mm -hmm. didn't even know. I didn't even know what I was going through or trying to navigate, but thank God for someone that did, you know, and that's a part of the village. And I won't get into all of that. Nonetheless, she got me the book. I read it and it just helped me just prepare myself for all the things that would come forward. I mean, yeah. you you can get into the whole like over sexualization, over mm-hmm. adultification of darker skinned black women, especially if we're thick or if we have a fat ass or big titties, we're automatically deemed as, you know, you know, sexually desirable by older men. And so then we're oftentimes um uh, what's the word? I don't even know the correct terminology, but like, um, what do they call it? Older men do this to younger women. They um, try to groom you. Grooming, yes. There's a lot of grooming that takes place. I mean, I can remember being like 11 or 12, maybe 13 when the shift changed and the whole, you need to put some clothes on because it's mm, men in the house. Right. Or, you know, you need to do whatever, just the sexualization. And I feel like oftentimes 
darker skinned black women experience that a little earlier yeah. or more often than not. And I mean, that can go all the way back to like the plantation. Which yeah. We don't have to. I think into. they think that if you have darker skin, that you're means tough. that you work hard. You're, yeah. you're tough. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> you're tough. You work harder. You can uh, handle a lot more. You are maybe a little bit stronger than what more mature. Right. More mature, like, and it's just like, bro, this is just my skin. I'm 12. <laughs> this is, I am still a woman. Right. At the end of it all, I still have feelings. Right. I don't need to work myself to the bone. Right. I'm not stronger than a lighter skin woman. Right. Like, bro, it's just skin. Yeah. Like, the, I, I feel like I'm in the middle, but mm-hmm. I see both sides of it. Mm-hmm. And getting those questions, like, oh my gosh. You gotten so dark, or oh my gosh. Can we talk about how? <laughs> Listen, I have fucking melanin in my skin and it tans in the summer. Right. Everybody gets darker. Can Stay we out stop the sun. You're going to keep getting dark. A phenomenon. I get so, like, literally, I had, and again, I don't think that there was any malicious intent, but for people sometimes just, I guess, don't have the range or have nothing else to fucking say. You've been in the sun, ain't you? Is the sky blue? Right. Is grass green? Right. Obviously, but why do you feel a need to speak on it? And a lot of times, people often try to chastise me because I am like very much pro myself and I sunbathe and I do all these things right. that the I like. The sun feels good. It's nice. And I like a good glow. You know, right. I don't mind being more chocolate, but like I had, you know, a guy that claimed to like me, like FaceTime me out of nowhere since he's been warm and was like, oh, what's up, Crispy? Use the fuck out of me. Click. Right. Erica tell you, I like to get out and my goal every summer is to see how black I could get and try to get back to that black that I received in Mexico. Right. <laughs> when I was I like got sunburned. I didn't even know I could sunburn. Yeah. But I just love to experiment with the colors that I could get to. But let mm-hmm. me do that. Um and don't like just leave it alone. Preference is preference, but you don't have to degrade other people for what your preference is. At the end of the day, I at the end of the day. <laughs> at the end of the day, I think a lot of it is just internalized self hate. Yeah. And um a lot of specifically as it pertains to men, women are guilty of this as well. But you see something in me that you hate about yourself. But because oh I gosh, love it, yes. you're trying to reconcile that fact yes. that, well, why do you have joy about that when this is something that should be bad or deemed bad? And there's a whole other side of this with fathers mm-hmm. and their children or black men who specifically date white women or lighter skinned women so that they can create women they fetishize. Right. I fucked that word up, but y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. That word is very hard. That's a whole thing. I was trying to say that and earlier when you were talking about dark skin women. so many black men do that. And it's like, you're obsessed with this light skinned child to the point of like, it's weird, bro. Stop very that weird. shit. It's very weird. It's very weird when you see an interracial couple and your first thing is, I want to get with a white man so I can have interracial babies or a baby with good hair. I want to get with a Spanish man so we can do this. Black on black is beautiful. beautiful. It looks really good. And um, I ain't going to get into that too much, but that's what I like. Different to episode. Call um, me back for that one. But we always have to. And I feel like it's so deep rooted that we have to speak to our little girls. Yes. Who are yes. of a darker complexion, even yeah. to our sisters who may be a different complexion from us and right. understand the stories that they're going through. Right. But these girls who are coming up in a society where we've been through a phase of not even a phase, but men in the early 2000s who specifically sought after white women to mm-hmm. reproduce these mixed babies. Mm-hmm. And now these mixed babies are coming up and they're the face yeah. of what it means to be black. And right. it's like, we're still here. We We're still, still here. Hello. <laughs> we still like, there are black women who are fully black yeah. um, because mixed black women are black too. But like, it's a different experience. It's different, yeah. It's a little yeah. different. Okay. It's a lot of different. It, okay. It's, we gonna we gonna go there? Well, I, it's, hey. It's different. Hey. It's different. Having a black daddy and a black mommy is different than having a white mommy and a black daddy Every day and of a the black week. mommy, yeah. ver- vice versa. It's different. You got the white experience. I didn't get that. All I know is black on black on black on black right. on black. But like teaching our young girls that it's okay mm-hmm. to have coarser hair. Right. It's okay to have the kinky kings. 
it's okay that your hair doesn't get all the way straight or that your favorite style is braids or, you know, you don't have that curly, that loose 3A curl when your hair gets wet. That's beautiful. Yeah. But the fact that we have to do that is like another layer of stress that goes on to black women. It's another job. Yeah. It's another thing that we have to do because we put on this motherfucking cape and save everybody, including ourselves. But the part about that is nobody's going to come to save us but Mm -hmm. ourselves, which is why it's so aggravating and disheartening because it's like you know when it's a black call a black cause we show up black men expect us to show up we do what's asked of us when it's a women's cause white women and non-black women expect us to show up we do what's you know expected of us when it's black women's issues 10 times out of 10 we are the only ones that show up for ourselves right where's everybody else we showed up for when the bonnet discussion was going on, the girls pick sides oh, when there was no sides always. to pick. You wear always. a bonnet when you go to sleep. Mind your day. Like, you should stand up. Yeah. The black elites. I talk about it all the time. And it is it is so infuriating as someone who I feel like, you know, is like in tune with the culture and tries to keep up with what's going on because there's so many messages that young black women are right. getting. Like, I'm a cheerleading coach. And I tell my girls all the time, like, the hair that naturally goes out of your head is acceptable and it's fine. If you want to add to that, do it. If you want to change it up and figure out, you know, different styles or what works for you, if you want to put chemicals in it, if you want to go back to a relaxer, excuse me, that's your choice to right. make because you have autonomy over yourself. And at the end of the day, you are the only person going in that bed at night, going to sleep. You got to wake up in your skin every day. Can't nobody else do it for you. Right. So you got to do what makes you happy. Fuck anybody else's opinion. And I think that's the the whole feeling around this episode is that we have to fight to be in the space that we're in. We're constantly fighting Always. views on our appearance, views on our attitude, views on our color of our skin. Yeah. And sure, black men go through it too, but it's a lot harder when you also have um, you have to maintain those things too. You have to yeah. maintain your feelings, your attitude, your appearance, and all the things. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. As well as being expected to show up for everybody else. Everybody. With your cape on. So on that note, I want to remind all the black women listening to take care of yourself. Love yourself. Black is beautiful. Every day of the week. And treat it like a job. Every time when you go to work, you go, you got your job, you reward yourself, you get a reward. Treat yeah. yourself. Yeah. Take care of yourself because nobody else is going to do it. Nobody. And that that is why I am so adamant about choosing violence. Right. (laughs) Violence or silence. (laughs) Violence or silence. Because we, again, we are going to be the only ones that stand up for ourselves and each other, that set those boundaries and that keep people out of our motherfucking business. Right. And if I got to do it one by one, I'm leaving no stone unturned. I'm I'm going to keep telling it. Because it means that much to us because I know the labor that goes into just waking up and walking out the house. Right. We are constantly on. Mm -hmm. Because we have to be. Right. Because everybody has all of these asinine expectations out of us. And so it's just like, guess what? I walk out the house every day knowing that I'm probably going to have to choose violence and I'm okay with that. (laughs) That's fine. That's That's fine. fine. But stop bringing it to my doorstep. Okay, stay out my business and I won't have to. (laughs) Stay out my business. And on that note, we're going to take a break and come back with our final thoughts. All right, so we're back for our final thoughts. And for the final thought, I want to talk about the work that me and Lex put in to not be one of those. Now, when I say one of those, I mean one of you black women in the community who are anti-black women. Yeah. So um, when I say that, I mean the women who are on the side of, you know, don't do this or you'll seem ghetto. Don't right. do that because it looks like this or don't do normal black shit that you're supposed to do as a black woman because it'll be embarrassing. Yeah. Respectability the politics. The ones who are telling you to calm down when you're in an establishment talking loud with your friends. That girl. So <laughs> <laughs> Lex, in your experience, how what work do you do to maintain your blackness. Wow. Your it's black woman essence. Taken so much work, but I think the root of it was I was so blessed to be surrounded by black women and darker skinned black women my whole life who is who have always poured into me, told me I was beautiful, told me I was smart, told me I was worthy. I mean, like all of the things. And so I've always had that foundation, but 
you know, given the society we go through, going to predominantly white schools outside of high school and then also going to a PWI, I still face a lot of the things we talk about. Yikes. And so because I had that experience, you know, I I was definitely subjected to a lot of the bullshit. But then I also, while some of it affected me in my younger years as a woman nearing 30. <laughs> I know, I look 22. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but as a woman nearing 30... A lot of my confidence and my reassurance is just grounded in self. I know who I am and I know whose I am. And so a lot of it is spiritual and knowing that like a lot of people project a lot of bullshit because they have not done the work to heal. And because a lot of people hate themselves, men, women, otherwise, right? I don't hate myself. I love Alexis. Yeah. I am going to wake up every day and put my best foot forward because I know that I deserve that. And a lot of that has come via therapy, via, you know, acknowledging trauma and trying to work past it and or reconciling with the fact that like this is what it is and it might not ever get any better than this. So then what are you going to do with it? Right. I, I can't fix it and I can't change it. But what I can do is work on me, be a better me and acknowledge, you know, when things come to my table per se is this something that's worth giving energy to? And if it's not, bye. Right. And if it is, maybe it's a conversation. Maybe it's something that, you know, shadow work I need to do within. But I've been able to kind of navigate these courses easier through experience. Yeah. We don't always get it right. Definitely. But always choosing violence. <laughs> that's the best bet. Violence over violence silence. Violence or silence. Those are the only options. And I've learned through experience that, Cussing somebody out the first time they do or say some shit that's out the way alleviates a second, third, or fourth time. Just advocating for yourself. Always. I feel like for me, I'm, I, I am constantly in a state of learning, but what has helped me moving forward is just realizing that we most times come from the same experiences. We're on the same team. We're yeah. fighting in the same war against everybody else. So anything that I can do to break the divide, the division that we have in our community yeah. is something that I'm doing. So when I look at another black woman, I'm like, yes, you understand, you know. Right. And sometimes to my my own fault, but instead of like looking at a black woman and saying, oh, you must be this, that, and the third, I'm yeah. giving every black woman the equal opportunity. Right. Or if I see another black woman in a different space, I'm you know, having that connection. You know that when you see a black... Listen. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Yes. We as, gonna as guess. A, as All opposed right. to the... Hey. What's right. Up? Like, right. any black girl. And just understanding that we're all playing on the same side and we yeah. all most times have the same experience. Yeah. But then also doing the research to see where these things are coming from. Mm -hmm. Why is it ghetto that I have long nails or why is it looked at differently because I have colored hair? Right. Or why do people see kinkier curls as not as appealing as the loose curls? Right. And just seeing where that comes from and learning about that. Because like I said earlier in the episode, it took me a while to realize that braids are braids. Yeah. Braids shouldn't be looked at as a style that you just wear on the day to day. But when right. you're trying to step out, you have to change it. Right. And just accepting those things and doing the learning, uh, indulging myself in the culture. Yeah. I, but what in my upbringing, um, middle class. Yes. Black girl. Touche. Is a thing where you're looking you're looked at from the kids who don't have that middle class upbringing as too privileged and you're looked at from the white folks as being black so yeah. just living in that space doing the work in that space finding my black spaces and being comfortable in those black spaces because yes I was a middle class black girl but there are billions hmm? of middle class Talk black girls it. that I can relate to <laughs> and instead of sitting myself on a high horse and picking a side the white side. Right. I sit right there in the middle. Yeah. And uh, bring up my yeah. other sisters. Yeah, as or we like, should. bring them to the side. Bring them on my team. Like, yeah. I, it's never been a time where I'm like, oh, she's too ghetto. She can't hang with right. us. Just doing that work. Right. So I think it's a constant learning experience because we ultimately we live in a white country. Yeah. It's normalized to be white there's so much nuance yeah especially being middle class black women and having the experiences that we've had like you talked about being in the middle and just to touch on that really quick it's like you're damned if you do you're damned if you right. don't 
To some people, I'm ghetto as hell. And to some people, I'm bougie as hell. Right. And it just really depends right. on either, where you I'm gonna are. Be either but one. guess what? I'm going to be me every day of the week. And so it doesn't matter. There's this quote. One of my favorite sociologists and one of my favorite authors, she wrote a book. It's called Thick and Other Essays by Tracy um, McCotton. And it says, I want to make people uncomfortable with the fact that they are uncomfortable with me. If you think I am anything worthwhile, intelligent or attractive or important, I want them to reconcile that with the fact that I sound like I sound. I look like what I look like and I am what I am. Right. Period. Absolutely. And that goes for anybody. And it's good for me to be around other black women who are in these professional spaces or or of a certain stature to realize that they like the ghetto shit too. Love it. So look at the have outside it. it. Y'all, y'all gang gang too. Right? So what's different from the girl that's really gang gang and me? You need to have a gang gang on I your love team. A gang gang. Okay. I'm not I'm not all the way gang gang, but I do be ganging. Okay. You know, like, I I'm be not ganging. I'm getting full gang gang. Right. Maybe the gang. I can but, call some people that's going to gang <laughs> gang. gang gang. I'm just getting, like, I see what you're doing. I like what you're doing, but I can't give you the other gang. You know? You know what I mean? I got <laughs> shit to lose, but I know some killers that's going to pull every time. <laughs> and okay? that's the thing. Got to have them. And like you said, there are and people. And they're just as important as the CEOs. Right. As the people right. in Baldwin Hills. Yes. As the people with the bag. Seeing you got to have all of them. Seeing black representation matters in different spaces. So shout out to that. Shout out to being a black woman. Shout, shout out, out to, to all being the a black, black women. Cheers. women of different. You know, the I'm going to cheers on that. You, shout out to black women. We just. <laughs> we set the culture. All the time. And in these space. We turn heads. But on that note, let's give y'all something to rock out to. You are now tuned in to the song of the week. You are now tuned, now tuned in. And this week, this song is brought to us via text message from the master himself, Meezy. Uh, he sent me Beating Down Your Block by Mona Leo. Let's get into it. Woo! Yeah. Good, good, good job. I struggle. <laughs> Measy, come back. <laughs> you do this? No, I like being here. Don't come back. I've never done the song of Don't the week before. Oh, <laughs> Lex is taking a spot. So, Lex, during that song, you talked about something on Apple Music. What was going yes. on okay. over there? So, speaking of black women's business, right, it's, it's very rare that, like, people give or create things that cater to us that's like not us right thinking about ourselves mm-hmm. apple music has a playlist called high maintenance and for a very long time the playlist was curated i'm assuming by a black woman and it featured all the rap girls like i mean from your favorite tiktokers youtubers to hot and meg cardi flo millie big lotto um ruby rose like all the girls bia who is becoming one of my oh, favorites oh i love bia in the rap i love game. that that whole, lot, whole of money, lot of she's money she's in that okay? okay i like that okay same hands you gotta listen to that because that's one of my favorites okay nonetheless at some point in time somebody decided to change it from the rap girls to like some slow you know a neo soul type of vibe and that's fine but that's not why we're here we didn't ask for that it's called high maintenance you know it's called high maintenance for a reason and we need to know what the rap girls are doing what songs they're dropping and what's hot how else are we supposed to get information for hot girl summer if we don't know what the hot girls are listening to you know and so literally there were like hundreds of black women who harassed the apple music social platforms i mean i was definitely a a spearhead on facebook (laughs) on the twitters on the instagrams like harassing these people every day change it back to rap change it black to black women in rap because literally they have like the rap life rap uh hits i mean there's like five different apple music curated playlists for hip-hop that are predominantly male and this is the only one we had and y'all take it away from us right but because we were determined to get our playlist back we got it back I'm proud and of that. And now it is back to the rap girls. I just added that playlist yes. to my Apple it's Music. Everything. Because I I literally sat there one day and I was like, dang, I was listening to Rap Life mm-hmm. on Apple Music. You might and, get a mega Cardi here. Though. Right. And I was like, That's dang, it. it would be dope to have like an all woman rap playlist. Yeah. And I thought it in my head, but I didn't know High Maintenance was out there. Yeah. So I'm going to listen to that. Listen to it. It's for us. It's um, for us. Sometimes it's it's great to not have to be the one creating the for us, by, being the by us you know, of the for us, by us. Boo boo, it wear you out. Sometimes it wear you out. Sometimes I want to know something was created for me. With me in mind. Okay. Did the research. <laughs> right. And know. Knows what we want to hear. 
It's giving what it's supposed to have gave. Okay. So our next segment, we're going to jump into our meme of the week, and we're going to get out of here. Before we do that, uh, Lex, what you got for your meme of the week? Okay. So <laughs> my meme of the week talks about what black women's business. Okay. And the people that often find themselves there, and that is what? Not where they need to be. They need to be somewhere so, else. And now I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a Venn diagram of where people should be. Um, a Venn diagram is two circles touching. Uh, for those of you who've been removed from school for a long time, <laughs> all of those words start to sound the same. <laughs> so, uh, okay, yeah, okay, I found it. So basically, it's like, you know, the diagram, and it's like inside, and there's women's business, and their things are like, you know, what is she wearing? Is she fucking him? Uh, you always <laughs> hyping her. I can't stand her. She flopping. She can't sing. Yada, 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 right? Women's but then business. there's like, because why are you in women's business? Right. Specifically black women's business. Right. And then there's like this outside where everybody should be if you're not black and or woman. Mm -hmm. Preferably both, you know. Look at your genitals. Look at your skin. Right. All right. And so it's like where you need to be. Um, pumping gas. That's right. Building houses. Mm -hmm. Cutting grass. Mm. Working out. Mm. Changing somebody oil. Woo. Playing basketball. Getting arrested on the block. <laughs> My favorite, not listed, going to war and dying. Oh my gosh. Because a lot of y'all could do that. And mm -hmm. I think the world would be a better place. Instead of being in our business. I love that. I love that meme. That's, and sometimes you need to, some people are visual learners. Right. You need to see what's going on Absolutely. in order for you to understand what is classified as black women's business right. and what isn't. Um, my meme is also <laughs> black women's business. And you'll probably understand this if you're a black woman. If your hairstylist, makeup artist, or nail tech texts mm. you, hey, boo, the day of your appointment, just go ahead and cry. Go ahead and cry. Go just cry. I haven't been in that <laughs> position. I was going to Miami several weeks ago in oh April. Oh, my. And the day of my appointment, an hour and a half before, I got a, hey, girl. No. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and call just somebody else. Because I already know. I, mean, I know my what this is. My flight is at 8 a.m. Not hey, boo. Hey, boo. I had... um. <laughs> This girl is my friend, but I had my friend do my braids one time and she had to leave because it was an emergency. Left me with my braids not done. <laughs> the pain I felt, but not too long because I know how to do my own hair. Right. But the pain I felt in that moment, just thinking like, dang, what if I didn't know right. how to do asked my own out. hair? Like asked out hair hanging out the top braided on one side like Friend, i finished it but it hurt yeah it hurt been there so shout out to all the black girls who hair appointments got canceled when you had some important plans because like we said early in the episode it take eight sometimes ten hours to get that style but um on that note thank you all for listening to another episode on tech of sexually active thank you lex for coming on to the episode i know you told the people in the episode where they could find you yes but if you want to let them know you know Absolutely. like where to keep up with you where to find the tweets yeah so i am on twitter i am on instagram my facebook is for the fam you know mm. like to keep that private everybody can't be on the they facebook can't be i on understand the facebook. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at underscore luxurious. L-E-X-U-R-I-O-U-S. Absolutely. So thank you all for listening to this episode. I hope you took notes, like I said in the beginning of it. I hope you walk out of this with a better understanding of what it means to be a black woman in America and the things that we go through. And I hope you take this learning and this conversation to continue to or to begin to mind your business period when it comes to black women issues yeah um you guys can keep up with us on instagram facebook and twitter and we'll be back next tuesday Meezy will be here uh make sure you follow lex so you can keep up with her i'm sure she'll be back on another episode but Show. thank you thank you guys for listening bye bye thank you for listening to the textually active podcast this podcast is a full service production from the open media lab be sure to check in every Textual Tuesday along with following them on all social media at Textually Active Pod. Textually Active is a part of the Open Media Network.